You are watching the ACC on ESPN from the capital city of the Sunshine State and from Dick Hauser Stadium. And we are set for game two of a rivalry series between the Miami Hurricanes and the Seminoles of Florida State here in the Atlantic Coast Conference. We're at Mike Martin Field as players are finishing their warm-ups. The Seminole starter, C.J. Van Eyck. There you see Freddie Zamora, the fantastic freshman shortstop. And the Canes starting pitcher today, Evan McKendry. All the players warming up on the field, and we welcome you up inside the broadcast booth, everybody. Sean Davison alongside Chip Baker. And, Chip, if there's anything we learned yesterday, you better take advantage of your opportunities because they're pretty hard to come by. Florida State with three base, three hits in the game last night, but the big blow came in the first inning with Cal Raleigh's two-run homer. Absolutely. And as we take a look at the highlights from game one, there is that two-run home run. Caught a lot of baseball. Caught a lot of air, too. It took a funky angle off the bat, but it was – deep enough to play a couple and then from there chip drew parish was incredible but Bargfeld as well for miami both awesome. left-handers dominated the ball game but drew parish had a great outing nine innings eight innings excuse me he went eight innings and mike martin went to connor grady he got one out but then struggled a bit so in came jonah scolaro striking out a couple of hurricanes and sealing the deal for florida state the canes had the bases loaded so some clutch pitching there from the freshman Scolaro. It was a 2-0 win for Florida State in game one of this rivalry series. But as we take a look at the starting pitcher comparison ship, both guys going eight innings, 24 strikeouts combined. Again, a great, well-pitched ball game. Florida State just took advantage of an early mistake. It's been an exciting series so far. No reason to believe today won't be exciting as well. Let's get game two underway. And as we get game two underway, we mentioned that C.J. Van Eyck would be the starting pitcher for Florida State. Indeed, he is the freshman at Lutz, Florida. Two starts on the season. This is his second Saturday start in a row. He's got a 1-0 record, a 3.68 ERA over 29 and third innings, 18 walks, 33 strikeouts. A three-pitch guy is Van Eyck. And this is a big moment for the youngster to come in against a rival and a great crowd that's going to continue to file in and he'll face this order here from Miami. Freddie Zamora once again leading off. Some shuffling around. Michael Burns after a good day up to the two spot. Quinones, Gonzalez, Reyes, Escala, Clunan checking in at right field. Anditas, the new catcher, and Raymond Gill rounding things out like he did yesterday, the first baseman. Umpires today, Doug Vines at home, Danny Everett at first, Tony Carilli at second, and Greg Street at third. And as always this weekend, we will be joined by Catherine Phillips. She'll check in with us momentarily and throughout the course of our broadcast here this afternoon and our broadcasts this weekend. So a full crew here. We're at full strength, and this crowd will be soon enough as well. Great lines outside the gates. I just came right back into the park. I had to run down to my card chip. There's a lot of folks waiting to get into the park, and we are underway. Zamora, first pitch swinging, and this will be a 6-3 ground out to get things going for Van Eyck. Always good to come in and your sec second ACC start, getting that first pitch, get that first out. Center fielder, number four, Michael Burns. And that'll bring up Michael Burns. So one pitch, one out, and we'll set the Florida State defense. Jackson Luke, Reese Albert, Stephen Wells out in the outfield, up the middle at Salvatore at short, Durr at second, on the corners, Mendoza at third, Applin at first, and behind the plate, Cal Raleigh making his 167th consecutive start, 164 now behind the plate. Strike one to Michael Burns. Two for two yesterday with a couple of walks and a couple of singles. So the one Hurricane who had the most success against Florida State. We only saw a chip eight hits all day long yesterday, so he was responsible for a quarter of them. And the count evens at one and one. Van Eyck, this is nothing for him. His last start was last weekend on Saturday in Fenway. Not a bad place to pick up the start. Ball on the field in right field. A little flip there from yep. Stephen Wells off into the bullpen. And Van Eyck will reset. Bigger crowd here than it was in Fenway. <laughs> A little bit more partisan crowd, too. Yeah, through there. Good showing, though, for someone who was up in Fenway. His out pitch is a big-time hammer curveball. See if he throws it. 12-6 curve out of Van Eyck, and that ball fouled off to the first base side. Michael Burns, despite having a good day at the plate when the Hurricanes had a chance, was picked off at second once. 
And that ended, I believe, it was the seventh inning yesterday. Burns has a 15-game on-base streak. It was 14 coming into the series. That leads the team. It's a transfer out of Wichita State and Cisco Junior College, and got a weak ground ball. Salvatore charging up to make the play, and got it there in time, two down. Good time play by the junior shortstop of Florida State. Coming hard to get it. Good pick by the senior first baseman for Apple. One get looked like might have been ball three, coming forward with the glove and making the throw on the run. And that'll bring up the freshman Quinones. Yesterday started as the catcher. He goes first pitch swinging on a 94 mile an hour fastball from Van Eyck. Van Eyck is getting loosened up a little bit. He hit 96, 97 a week or so ago. Quinones, the freshman out of Pembroke Pines, now falling behind the count 0-2 on a couple of fastballs. That one at 93. Beautiful sky here today. It's very sunny. Going to play part of this game. The pitcher's in the sun, the hitter's in the shade. The ball up and in on Quinones again yesterday, the starting catcher. But Amditas back to fill that role. So Quinones, who came into this series with the best batting average on the team amongst consistent starters, goes down swinging. He was a natural pick to become the DH, despite the fact that he wasn't going to get the start behind the plate. But that's the first strikeout today for C.J. Van Eyck. And just like Drew Parrish yesterday, a great and efficient first inning for him. That's that big-time curveball. He threw one there. All right, so the Seminoles and the Hurricanes will change over here in the first inning. And we'll stay here in Hauser with them as they do that. And a great showdown here this weekend, not just between two storied programs, but between two legendary head coaches Mike Martin leading the way for Florida State and Jim Morris of course leading the way for Miami two guys that you know as you look at them and as you recollect on them in their careers two guys that you can recall based on number 11 and 3 you, you don't have to you don't have to say Mike you don't have to say Mr. Martin it's 11 same thing with Jim Morris he's 3 I had a pleasure, well, I mentioned last night's broadcast, I had a pleasure to work with both of them. Like Jim Morris for a year, I've known him for a number of years, and again, my career here with Mike Martin. But I walked by the dugout yesterday, and Jim Morris was in his game mode, just to look at Evan McKinley's numbers. I said, three, you okay? And he goes, I'm good. So he recognized the number three. Exactly. 11th start here for Evan McKendry. He's got a 3.52 ERA, 61 and a third, 23 walks, 80 strikeouts, has got the best strikeout stuff, gets a lot of swings and misses, and this looking on paper chip is going to be probably the most formidable threat that Miami's going to pose to Florida State on the mound. This guy's got a lot of quality outings. This big guy, 6'4", 220, big time slider. He gave University of Florida the first loss of the year. He's beaten in the last few weeks. He beat Florida back in March. He beat Notre Dame. Virginia he had a complete game against Clemson a few weeks ago. And Big time pitch. And he'll face this order from Florida State. Mike Salvatore leading off. Jackson, Luke, Rhett, Applin, Cal Rowley, Drew Mendoza, Stephen Wells, Nick Durr, Reese Albert, and today Rafael Bornegal will be the designated hitter for the Garnet and Gold. So we've seen Mike Salvatore impress defensively as the shortstop, and you saw him there in the on-deck circle. A couple more pitches here for Evan McKendry. He's got a fastball, that slider that you mentioned, and a changeup. Changeup described to me from the Miami folks as being nasty and has been a go-to pitch for him in tough situations. So you can expect to see him throw that changeup quite a bit for strikes. And we'll get to see him here as Salvatore steps up to the plate. So a final word or two with his infield. A lot of freshmen in that infield. And they will settle in. And we'll see what the Seminoles can do at the plate. We'll see what McKendry has to offer them. Salvatore Jr. out of New Jersey. Came into the series with a 244 batting average, down slightly through game one to 241. And ahead in the count here, 1 0. A 
couple of really fast balls here from Kendrick. You see that last pitch, somewhat sink a very heavy fastball. Probably induces a lot of ground balls along with that big slider of his. Working up with the fastball there, and it's a quick 3-0 count to Salvatore. Three point five two ERA for McKendry in a five and five record. So there have been some teams that have cracked the code against him. But that is a four pitch leadoff walk to Mike Salvatore. Seminoles off to a good start here in the bottom of the first. Miami came out swinging a bat. Far State as they normally do, patient at the plate. Took a solid several innings for Florida State to earn that first. Well, actually, took a couple of solid at bats for Florida State to earn that first walk. I'm Getting ahead of the, uh, getting the cart before the horse. Applin earned a walk yesterday in the first inning, and then Raleigh played it in both. But it was another four or five innings until the Seminoles got to walk again. Applin, last night's ball game, earned a walk by fouling a bunch of balls off, and he was on base when Raleigh hit his big home run to right field. A 10 pitch at bat for Applin, but here is Jackson Luke, the junior out of Orlando, Florida. The guy who leads this team when it comes to having pop off the bat, that ball gets behind the glove of Amditas. A rare start for Amditas behind the plate since the injury. Yesterday, he came in as a pinch hitter in the ninth, was the final out of the ball game. And with that ball getting behind his glove, that was easy for Salvatore to advance into scoring position. So a good start gets a little better here for Florida State. Not sure if that was a rude to wild pitch. If it is, McHenry has, leads the club in wild pitches. Was seven. That was seven. I think it was probably going to be a pass ball. And be this is seventh pass ball. That's like a bunt right there. Florida State has a beautiful situation for a ball gets by. You've got a runner second base scoring position now. Florida State's got three chances to get him in. And that ball well off the plate. What I was going to say is that Jackson Luke leads the team in terms of home runs. He leads the team in RBI, but has not been able to string a whole lot together. There's been stretches where his batting average has gotten closer up to the high two, 200s. His has sniffed 300 really early in the season. But here he is down at 230. 236 to be exact. And ahead in the count here, three and one. Tremendous focus as he is right there. The numbers he's put up struggling a little bit this year, especially in the month of, of February. It's a guy that can focus and zero in, especially a 3-1 pitch. Look for a certain pitch in a certain part of the zone. He could do a lot of damage. Fastball count there, and that's exactly what McKendry came at him with, and he'll foul it off to make the count full. The Animals of Section B celebrating their 40th anniversary. You'll see a few of those 40s in Section B. He'll lead the cheers and the chants and the songs around this park all evening long. Tremendous crowd. Early to 6 o'clock start tonight. Animals shut down their annual, and we'll talk about it later. They shut the party <laughs> down. Get them here for the first pitch, which we'll show later on. But tremendous crowd here to start the ball game on the Saturday night. Hardly a seat to be had in the entire house. Count remains full to Jackson Luke. Salvatore in scoring position, and that a ground ball to the first base side. Gill jammed a little bit, but was able to make the play in time to McKendry. But Luke does his job and gets Salvatore over to third. And with Gill jammed a little bit, almost got to the bag himself. He can double clutch it a little bit, trying to get the ball out of his glove, but it is sure throw to his big right hander covering first. So here's Rhett Applin, and here's his overall batting average at 290, but an ACC play, 333, 11 RBI in ACC play. He's got 21 total on the year, and half of his doubles have come in ACC play. This is a guy who's figuring it out against conference opponents. He's yet to connect on a long ball in ACC play. His two home runs came back-to-back -back at bats at the University of Florida back in, in March. Owen won the count to Applin. McKendry working away from him. Trying to go to the same route that Barkfield did last night for the University of Miami. A lot of off-speed pitches. And peppered in with his fastball and a hard slider. 
Got him with an off speed right there. Another change up. Especially early in the ball game, everybody's motions up a little bit, trying to do too much. And again, locating the change up is big. If you happen to make contact, get it deep enough, you can plate Salvatore, but you got to get it out there, and he strikes out looking. Big pitch there from Evan McKendry. That'll bring up Cal Raleigh, and when we talk Cal Raleigh in the first inning with a runner aboard, well, how about yesterday? Went deep to right. And over the fence, those two runs, the only two runs scored in the entire ball game on Friday. So here we are once again. Two outs, runner aboard, Cal Raleigh at the plate, swinging from the left side. Raleigh had the fastball up in the zone, squared it up. A lot of times he popped that ball up. He squared that one up last night, gave it a huge ride to right field. Inside fastball, the count goes 2-0 to Raleigh, the junior out of North Carolina. A 438 on base percentage. Runs a great deal of walks. Not a ground ball to the first base side. And that will not eliminate the threat. McKendry can't make the grab. Raleigh turns for second. Salvatore comes in. It's 1-0 Florida State. Don't look down. Mike took the off the ball, looked down and right it in the scorebook, looked down and didn't see the play. Heard the crowd. That's all you need to hear. Pitcher covering first, get the throw, did not, threw the ball on the inside, off his right shoulder, he should lead him on his left side, and that ball gets away. Florida State gets a break, a big break here, with two outs in the first inning. So an error plates Mike Salvatore for the second day in the row, the Seminoles on the board first. Here plays Salvatore in scoring position with Cal Raleigh, and now Drew Mendoza steps up to the plate. And now for McKendry, you've got to reset. You should be in the dugout right now. And that ball well inside. It's 1-0. Seems like when these two teams play, the team makes a mistake. The other team that's fortunate to have the mistake made against him takes advantage of it more than one run. 321 batting average for Drew Mendoza. That leads the club. But his batting average in ACC play at 227. So that'll give you an idea of how well he's been hitting outside of conference play and hasn't been able to quite figure it out here against conference opponents. A good change up, tremendous movement. Away from the left-handed hitter, almost like a screwball. Had so much movement. Count goes 2-0 to Mendoza. See Raleigh getting the lead off a second. Jim Morris looking on. Big swing there at a fastball. It goes two and one. And I think he swung at ball three. Yes, down he end. did. Ball off the plate. Turned on two hard balls last night. One a line drive out, one a double down the right field line. Two different bats. So we're going to change up there. It's two and two. The air puts more pitches in the guy on the mound's arm as well. It's that bat right here. There's no throws. Mike Martin coaching up Drew Mendoza you just saw there. Here's the 2-2. Down he goes. So McKendry comes right back and gets Mendoza out. But Florida State is able to plate one off an error. Gonzalez, Reyes, Escala do up. 13th ranked Seminoles up 1-0 over Miami. CJ Van Eyck back out on the mound for Florida State. An efficient first inning for Van Eyck. Just 11 pitches to get through. Zamora, Burns, and Quinones, a couple of 6-3 ground outs and a strikeout to the freshman designated hitter Quinones, who came into this weekend leading the Hurricane Club in batting average. And here is the third baseman, 
the only non-freshman in the infield for Miami, Romy Gonzalez. Gonzalez, a junior with a 252 batting average. And immediately wears a pitch. So a much better start to the second inning for Miami than they had in the first one. Come up first pitch after your team gets your run in the first. You got a break, scored a run on an error. Came back first pitch and just left the breaking ball inside. Did not throw it. Now you got a runner on first. One pitch in the first and Zamora grounded out. One pitch in the second. Gonzalez is on base. Here's Danny Reyes, who yesterday was the DH, now in left field, where Hunter Tackett was yesterday. There's a good pitch there from Van Eyck. Brings the junior out of Miami Springs. 288 batting average. Fastball strike, it's 0-2. In addition to that batting average, a 309 on base percentage for Reyes. And come back after hitting the first batter, come make two good strikes. Gonzalez at first base, second on the club, 11 out of 14 stolen bases. Jim Morris will try to get something going tonight, early. Another strikeout for Florida State, the second for Van Eyck. Raleigh throwing it down to Applin, but Gonzalez is safe. Relying on a changeup. Both these guys are good arms, they're relying on changeups because it. it their fastball and they're breaking stuff. Sets that up. And here's Willie Escala. He batted in the two spot yesterday. We've been down to the six spot here today. Again, throw back over to first, and Gonzalez is safe. Talked to several people. This freshman here can put on a show defensively. Can really play. That ball sent high and deep toward right field and off the fence. I think Wells might have lost that in the sun. And now there's going to be runners in scoring position for Miami. You saw him shielding his face for a second. And the ball hit off the fence a good yard or two off to the side. We'll never know because that's a senior out there who's played that ball field a lot. Might have. Decoyed or especially to run it first. Gonzalez didn't get a good read with Wells. That ball was up off this one of the signs, just like three or four sections up. And this is going to bring out Mike Martin here. So an extra base hit for Escala, as you mentioned, brings out Mike Martin here in the second inning. If it's a freshman out in right field, I'm going to say he lost it in the sun. A senior out there decoyed the base runner. <laughs> it was still off the screen, so it don't really matter, right? Gotcha. Going back to the first pitch of this inning. Hit batter, now he's on third base, one out. Miami with a great opportunity here to knock this thing up with only one out on the board. It'll be Dylan Clunan who steps up to the plate to try to do just that. First time we'll see him this weekend is Mike Martin, Florida State's head coach, in his 39th season with the Garnet and Gold, making his way back to the dugout after having a word with his defense. These two coaches know each other like a book. Your ball clubs change. Your coaching, coaching philosophy stays the same, but the way you run the ball game is different. Depends on the personnel you have on the field. And there you see Jim Morris. Two coaching masterminds here at Dick Hauser Stadium, and here is Dylan Clunan. Two twenty-four batting average. Got to respect the left-handed batter. 
Mendoza at third base is playing even with the bag. Look, potential a bunt, score run. Also, you have Applin at first playing in. Change up, up and away. This time, catch in the corner. Clunan is a freshman out of Cutler Bay, Florida. Mentioned that 224 batting average, a 317 on base percentage. Five RBI on the season, has a chance to make it six here. The count one and one to Clunan. Make that one and two. Left handed hitter. The Nike left the, with the back door breaking ball, threw it off the outside corner and got a piece of the plate for it. Two strikes. Seminoles looking for strikeout number three today as the infield comes in. Got it! You picked it up. The infield came in with two strikes. That sometimes has an effect on the hitter. Florida State likes to do it sometimes with two strikes, brings the infield in. Now the hitter sees it. Now strike three, take, took it. Infield in, you get a chopper, you get a play at the plate. And You're learning Florida State baseball. I you? am. <laughs> I've only been doing this with you a few years. <laughs> Change up strike there to Amditas. A lot of times it depends on who the guy's in the batter's box. You got two, three, four. A lot of times you may not do it in the order, but down in the order, you may do that. And this is a Miami team that's got a lot of freshmen, a lot of guys who have not seen Florida State yet. Correct. That ball up in the air to right field. Didn't catch all of it. And the threat is eliminated into the glove of Stephen Wells. He will lead things off here in the bottom of the second when we come back to Tallahassee. To where Florida State leads 1-0 over Miami. They have 40 consecutive 40 or more win seasons. That leads the country by just a couple. Unbelievable. <laughs> I was fortunate to be part of that streak as a coach and also as an administrator. I said, nobody is. Like you said, the next group is Louisville with six, six straight years. And then look at the bottom, 12 consecutive 50-plus win seasons. And you look at all those programs with only six or so 40-plus win seasons in a row. Former ball players, y'all played a lot more games back then. I said, yep, we won a lot of more <laughs> games too. <laughs> exactly, that's the key. <laughs> well, Seminole royalty in the ballpark tonight. Mike Lloyd, former Golden Spike Award winner, the last 20-game winner in college baseball was in the dugout pregame. And I was telling some younger guys about it. I said, that is the biggest jerk that's ever been on the field for Florida State. I'm talking about he just he was nasty on the mound. But golly, what a pitcher. 20 ball games, 120 games. And he was a – he got after it. He had he probably pitched about six or eight of these ball games, Florida State Miami. Mike Lowen. Good to have him back in the house and good to have a full house here as Stephen Wells steps up to the plate. We'll go ahead and take a look at the numbers from where he was about a week or so ago to where he is now. 195 batting average. It's now at 282. 14 RBI up to 21. A slugging percentage at 333. That's up to 464. No, oh, by the way, he's been the national hitter and player of the week. Not a bad week to have if you're Stephen Wells. <laughs> Tremendous week. Ball team traveled to Stetson this past Tuesday after a long weekend in Boston. I said, guys, we were in Florida State T-shirts and Florida State shorts. What Florida State gives you, you're going to wear on the bus. Relax it, come, you grab bus ride. One of the older players, one of the younger, younger guys, pointed to Stevie Wells, who wasn't wearing what everybody else was wearing. He said, he don't have on what, what I'm wearing. I said, I don't care about him. <laughs> <laughs> he can wear what he wants to wear. As long as he keeps that <laughs> he, up. <laughs> I I, he does not exist in my world. So whatever he wants. A, a tremendous week he had. Laid off the fastball there. It's one and two. Playing in some tough conditions at Boston College. Again, 30-plus degrees on Friday night. And he'll go down swinging. He didn't see change-ups like that last week. No. That's big no. time. <laughs> so he'll give way to Nick Durr. Durr, the sophomore out of Sarasota. Saw some action last season at 17 RBI last year, up to 22 this year. By no means near the end of the season, but he'll take a fastball strike from McKendrick. Batting average at 224 on the season. But a 238 batting average in ACC play, so a little bit better against conference opponents than he's been in non-conference play, but comes up empty there on another fastball at 0-2.
Wow. You mentioned he had a slider. I didn't realize he had a good a changeup. He's making that thing move tonight. The word told to me was nasty. I think that qualifies. Yes, sir. Ball breaks in, down and in to a right-handed hitter. Three strikeouts in a row and four out of the last five for McKendry. And had they not had the little fielding blunder against Cal Raleigh, there wouldn't be a run on the board for Florida State either. McKendry's fastball, as you saw right there, 94 miles an hour. That changes about 80 or so. Big difference in that. Great arm speed. Reese Albert goes oppo and base hit in the left field. They'll pull up at first as the Hurricanes have the relay into the infield. Reese Albert saying, I'm not going to wait for that changeup. I get a fastball, drove it to left field, and he did. Staying back on the ball. First hit of the day for Florida State. They had a walk in the first. Hit stayed still, stayed behind the ball, drove it to left field. It's, you can't defense that. Again, that's good job of hitting. So here's the DH, Rafael Bornegal, at the bottom of the order. Mditas up and out of his stance to try to throw down to first. Big time pick block there. Get the runner from scoring position with two outs. Bornegal is senior out of Mulberry, Florida, which is a small town outside of Lakeland, Florida, which isn't that much bigger of a town outside of Orlando. Chopper over the head of McKendry, and another fielding blunder here for Miami. Zamora had the wheels, but he couldn't get the glove there to scoop up the ball, so runners on at first and second for the Seminoles. They're going to go ahead and call that a base hit, but Zamora did have a chance. The thought of an error is because how good he is. Again, it's a freshman. He's got tremendous range. Ball just got away from him there. Bounded up, the, on, I believe it was on the first base side of second. Florida State got something going back to the top here with Salvatore. And despite the low volume of at-bats, hits have been hard to come by from Bornegal, so he's not going to argue the hit decision no, not, on the board. Not at all. Salvatore walked in the first. He'd come in to score on the error. So both innings, the Seminoles getting a runner in scoring position. They cashed it in in the first. Let's see if they can cash it in here. Quickly, though, Salvatore behind the count, 0-2. Two. two out, miscues by Miami. Again, that ball was not a miscues to base hit, but put more pitches in his arm with McHenry. He's gone 100 pitches plus in about six of his 10 starts this year. He can get you deep into a ball game. A lot of extra pitches here early in the game, the 35th pitch here. Down goes Salvatore, and as he runs down, Amditas was able to get the glove up and make the tag. So. He'll abort that run, and Gil, Zamora, and Burns will be up to see if the Hurricanes can tie this thing up or take the lead. Top of the third inning here in Tallahassee. Sean Davison alongside Chip Baker as Florida State leads at 1-0. Third member of our crew is Catherine Phillips. She's standing below. Hey there, KP. Hey there, Sean. Well, Jim Morris has called this his favorite series to coach. And so I asked him with the up and down season that he's had, if he's ever second guessed his retirement. He told me, well, after 41 years as a head coach, that is a long time. He said that's about all the fun or punishment that any one person deserves. Now, he also has a six year old son and he lit up yesterday talking about the amount of time that he'll have to spend with his family now. So he's very content with his decision. He knows that this is the right time. And guys, he's even going to take a vacation this summer. He just doesn't know where yet. He said that'll be up to his wife. Sean. Good call there. This man's trying to stay married. He's leaving it up to the boss. True there. <laughs> KP looks good, pretty in pink tonight. Safe to say she's the bright oh, yeah. spot of the it's broadcast. The That's true there. <laughs> she always does such a great job down there on the sidelines. Got some insight on Coach Marsh. That's good. And here's Raymond Gill. Big swing there at a fastball from Van Eyck. It's 0-1. Fourth of nine, Hurricane batter swinging at first pitch. An aggressive approach to the plate for Miami. 
And that fastball there above the zone, it's one and one. Gill, one of a couple of guys that you'll see at first base throughout the season. Alex Terrell in every team sends out their, their game notes and their projected starters and whatnot to try to help us prepare as best as we can. Alex Terrell was the guy that was on Miami's notes. And we saw him come in for Gill as Gill strikes out. Raleigh will throw him down. Unable to apply the tag. It still works just the same. But Gill, the guy who's gotten the start, but we've seen Terrell come in at times. Might see Terrell come in at some other point during the rest of the game here today. Back to the top of the order here in Zamora. He'll take a fastball strike. And Ike settled down here in the third inning. Again, threw some good breaking balls to Raymond Gill. That ball sent toward left field. Luke on the run and underneath it. Center fielder, number four, Michael Burns. And that'll bring up Michael Burns. He likes Zamora. Grounding out to the shortstop, Salvatore. Not a whole lot of pitches either. Then I got through the first inning in 11 pitches alone. It was a 1 2 3 inning for him. And again, a first pitch strike. This time, Burns taking. It's 0 and 1. On the ground and through. Couldn't keep him quiet for long. Burns has had a really good weekend at the plate so far for Miami, and that's a two-out base hit into center field. Six in the order last night with a couple of hits. For, for, for three hits last night for Miami. Again, Jim Mars moved him up in the order there. Get him up more often. And that'll bring up the freshman, Quinones. Quinones got off to a really good start this year. Had a 15-game on-base streak. He had a walk in the first game of the year. Then in the next 14 games, he also had a hit in at least every one of those games. So he had a 14-game hit streak and a 15-game on-base streak that came to an end when the Hurricanes took on UNC. But if that's the start you're going to have to your freshman campaign at a major D1 school, not bad at all. Bad at all. You're going to see eight top pitching every weekend. 293 batting average after the strikeout in the first. He's popped that ball up and foul. It'll go 0 and 2. Got him looking this time. Struck out swinging in the first, struck out looking in the third. And C.J. Van Eyck has five strikeouts today. Luke Applin Raleigh due up. Third inning here in Tallahassee at Mike Martin Field. And we'll take a look at the ACC baseball standings. You want to take it one game at a time, but... You know, one of the things we talked about yesterday, Chip, was with both of these teams toward the middle of their respective divisions, whoever can win this series, maybe pick up a sweep, although that's been hard to come by in this rivalry series, would be the team that's able to make a move toward the top of their conference or the, at least their respective division. Florida State starting to creep up on NC State and Clemson, who they play coming up. If you get within three games, and that's the big thing, Florida State here with 12 and 9, I believe, get within three games, you never know what can happen. Seminoles within a couple of games at the top, and again, they've got... Clemson on the road next weekend. They've got NC State coming to Tallahassee to close out the regular season. Right now, focused on Miami. And what I meant, get the three, get inside the three games. You're three games behind. The team's 12 wins. Florida State, 
15 wins, Florida State with 12. Get inside of that three-game window, never know what can happen. They're going to need Jackson Luke to provide some offense for them, but he's behind the count 0-2. Grounded out in the first. And that ball chopped foul. taking a second to clean off the home plate. And now McKendry resets and is ready to go. Here comes the 0-2. And that ball on the ground and through. Jackson Luke picking up a base hit. Just under the glove of Escala, who couldn't dive and make the stop. Seminoles with another base hit here today. Rare 0-2 mistake. And what a bullet that Jackson Luke hit. Ball was down low, and he just drilled it by Willie Scully at second base. That ball had a lot of juice on it, low as it was hit. Chip through three innings. Florida State has equaled their hit total from yesterday. Here's Rhett Applin. He struck out in the first. The first of five for McKendry. And there's a fastball on the outside corner for strike one. Whoa, that throw gets away from McKendry. The error moves Luke into scoring position. Just airmailed Raymond Gill. Henry with two pickoffs for the year, just like you mentioned, let one go. Miami got a break, that ball came back off the wall pretty good. Sometimes it gets kicked down and goes down that well, Luke may have a chance to get to third base, but not going to take a chance with nobody out. That'll be the second error charge to McHenry as Applin lays down a beautiful bunt. That'll get Luke over to third. Well, you couldn't have asked for a much better bunt there from Applin. Just stopped dead and eliminated any possibility for anybody to make a throw over to the third base side. Florida State getting a runner to third base with one out with Raleigh up. Applin getting the ball. Got, a, got it and got it down on the ground and gave Jackson Luke ample opportunity to see the ball on the ground and got a good jump to third base. That's a tag plate, which is very difficult on the defense. Chopper to the first base side. That will plate a run. Miami cutting its losses and getting the force at first, but it's 2-0 Florida State. Second baseman Willie Escala playing about 10 yards out in the outfield grass. Not a chance the infield was playing back. Giving up the run. Raleigh did a good job of pulling the ball, getting that run in. Florida State manufacturing a run after Alpha's base hit. Excuse me, after Jackson Luke's base hit. So the Seminoles scoring a run in the first and now a run in the third. By the way, both of those unearned. Count one and one now to Mendoza. Fastball that time makes the count one and two. Takes a change up down his last at bat for a strikeout. Mendoza would like to channel what he had against Stetson in the midweek last week, where he had five hits, including a home run, but he's thrown out there to end the inning. But another run comes in for Florida State, both of which unearned, but they hurt just the same. Gonzalez, Reyes, and Escala do up for the Canes. Jim Morrison, his last season, is Miami's head coach. 
his 37th overall season as the head coach, spent 12 years at Georgia Tech. This is 25th year at Miami, of course. His record at Miami, over 1,000 wins, over 1,500 for his career. That's still top 10 in the NCAA. The 2008 ACC Coach of the Year won a couple of national championships at Miami as well. An impressive resume for Jim Morris. Again, the 1999 championship beat Florida State late ending heroics. Bases loaded double to put his first national championship for Jim Morris. And a healthy round of applause with Saturday games here in Tallahassee. It's the day that the Seminoles salute the troops and veterans that are visiting the park and abroad. So something that both sides here, whether you're in green or garnet, can cheer for. And now we get back to the action, and Romy Gonzalez leading off here in the top of the fourth, and that ball short hops into the plate. It's 1-0. Like you said, you can always cheer for the red, white, and blue. Absolutely. That ball knocked into left field, but not enough. And Luke is there, one down. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Danny Reyes, who struck out. He was the second strikeout for Van Eyck in this ball game after Gonzalez was hit by a pitch in the second. This is the guy that was swinging a really good bat in the fall and in spring practice and one of a handful of Hurricanes that's battled injury issues. They've lost a few kids for the season. And they just got him back in that Clemson series. The count one and one to Reyes. Big swing there at a fastball, 94 miles an hour from Van Eyck. It's one and two. Van Eyck looking for strikeout number six. Made him chase that last pitch and see if it expands his zone here. See Raleigh to pinch it just a little bit outside. Breaking ball. There it was. And he came around. Strikeout number six indeed. See the catcher go up and just put, make it about an inch off the plate and he throws this hard breaking ball. And this is M.O. If he can throw that pitch and hit with it, that ball was off the plate, but he lets those hitters see it. The big time breaking ball. Makes everything else look so much better. So quickly two outs and now here's Willie Escala. His double in the second was the first hit of the day for Miami. It was off the screen in right field. He checks a swing but not in time. It's one and one. with the double, batting average up to 294 for Escala. Second on the team in hits on the year. Coming into this series with 41, one of only two Hurricanes above 40 hits on the season. The other being the other freshman, one of many actually, Quinones. 16 freshmen on this roster, including a redshirt freshman. Only 12 upperclassmen. And strikeout number seven for C.J. Van Eyck. New pitcher, new day, same old song. C.J. Van Eyck with seven strikeouts through four innings. See the cap there of Mike Martin. It's kind of like waiting at the deli there. You got to get your stub <laughs> hey, to go wait, get your water. <laughs> wait your way in line there, get a drink of water. There is no preferential treatment if you're in your 39th season as a head coach with 1,974 career wins. You wait your turn. <laughs> 16 College World Series appearances last coming last year. Seven ACC championships, including the tournament last year. Seven-time ACC Coach of the Year. And I'll tell you what, that ACC tournament championship they won last year. Chip, we were sitting here, we are talking about, is this a team, is this the first time that this team or program is not going to go to the NCAA tournament? Swept Louisville, swept their way through the ACC tournament, not only went to the NCAA tournament, but hosted a regional, hosted a super, went all the way to Omaha. Get it going late, and that's what Florida State did in 2017. 
They sure did. Stephen Wells taking a strike there. I'm laughing to myself, Coach Martin. Doesn't have a whole lot of things he wants down in that dugout. But he did one time one of the managers came out. Student trainers put a different color Powerade juice in the, in the cooler. He doesn't like certain colors. <laughs> I've been around him for a long time. I didn't know this. But all of a sudden, <laughs> one of the guys, one of the student tra managers, student trainers, was kind of quickly making some juice up during the ball game. And finally realized that Coach Martin doesn't like this flavor. Don't put this flavor. Get rid of it. Take it all back to the other side. Take it back to the training room on the big side. <laughs> Football's, he wants certain flavors. He's the man. Gets what he wants. And I'll tell you what, regardless <laughs> of the flavor yeah. you like, there's one thing that you'll find everywhere on this campus. Powerade. Yes, sir. Not that other one. <laughs> One and two, the count to Wells. And this is something that Stephen Wells has done regardless of how hot he's been at the plate. One of the leaders on this team in walks came into this series with 36. One of three Seminoles in the top 10. And not just the ACC, but the entire NCAA in that department. He earns another walk right there. And a leadoff walk as well for Wells. Second time in this ball game, the Seminoles have let off an inning with a walk. The other time was the first inning. That was Mike Salvatore, of course. And he would come in to score. Strike one to Nick Durr. Sharp line drive foul. It's 0-2. I'd like to see Nick Durr swing that back. And he is dangerous when he swings the bat. And this year is the year that he's really seen some pop yes. off that bat, too. 3.53 on base percentage. Seminoles once again with a runner aboard. Runners up last night. Runners, I believe, second and third. He worked him two backdoor breaking balls and got him, got him, got him to out on a fastball away. Did nothing with it. Third time in four innings, the Seminoles have had their lead off the board in some fashion. Kendra taking a little extra time here, and he'll try to throw over to first. Wells is safe once again. He circled his at bat last night's ball game. Florida State had, I believe, was second and third, and he hit 0-2 count. Back door breaking balls back to back and threw a fastball away. It looked like he was trying to pull it. He can go all parts of the field. So strong, strong hitter. That ball down in the dirt. It's two and two to Durr. I'll tell you what, if you're McKendry too, you keep throwing over to first, that's a very quick and easy way to get these animals on your bad side, and they'll let you know about it too. Ground ball there from Dura, kind of like a swinging bunt. He'll get thrown out at first. It's going to help you average, but it did the job. As you mentioned, a swinging bunt gets Wells the second. Then bring up Reese Albert. Albert. Very quickly. A very confident young man, too. You know, we see him on occasion. He's made now 10 starts in center field, eight out and right, and eight as the DH. Kind of breaks the mold sometimes, too. You know, some of those like to take a lot of pitches. He's a guy he likes to swing. It's that youthful enthusiasm, I think, yeah. Chip. Got a great stroke. The fastball to left field is last at bat. Couple right. strikeouts in last night's ball game with the first pitch ground ball to shortstop in between. He's playing because he can swing the bat, but also he's a pretty good center fielder. Placement, J.C. Flowers, who's out. 
good news. A month for, with injury, yeah. yeah. And good news for Seminole fans. Flowers just had that jaw unwired, so on the mend is J.C. Flowers. Can't be going back to that big-time changeup. There's J.C. Had a big smile on his face yesterday. I think he had his mouth unwired and tired of drinking everything he had to eat. He was drinking it through a straw or something. Big swing there from Albert. What a changeup. A lot of movement on that thing. Your pitching coaches talk about it. Devastating changeup. This guy's got one. Mm-hmm. It makes everything else just jump out of your hand. He's looking for his sixth strikeout here today. You start looking for the changeup, and that fastball comes at it about 15 miles faster. He can beat you inside. He can throw it away from you. Throw it by you. Now we're going to step out and get back in. Got him on the outside corner. Breaking ball looks mm -hmm. like got him right there. And here comes Rafael Bornegal. Bornegal with that C and I single up the middle. He's <laughs> got away from the boards up the middle there. Again, he'll take it. Batting average still just at 193 for Bornegal. Does have a couple of home runs on the year, 13 RBI and a 306 on base percentage. He's earned 11 walks on the year. So that's what's helping out that OBP. High fly ball right field, Bornegal. Off the fence is Bornegal. He's going to add to that RBI total. It's going to be 3-0 Florida State. Throw comes home. Bornegal stays at second, but it's an RBI double for the designated hitter. Experienced ball player, senior graduate transfer for Florida State. Sitting 1-0 count, looking dead red. He's no, he's down in the order, bat ninth. He gets the pitch, and he pops it deep to right center field. Ball off the screen. And just like that, the batting average north of 200. <laughs> Mike Martin had a quick minute there with Salvatore as he comes up as the catcher went out, spoke to this pitcher. In every inning that Florida State has gotten their leadoff man aboard, they have scored. Salvatore walked in the first. He would come in to score on an error. That ball is going to get away from AMD. This is going to throw down to third, and Bornegal is safe. Then in the third, Jackson Luke led off with a base hit. He'd come in on a RBI ground out from Cal Raleigh. And now here, Stephen Wells walks, and... The RBI double from Bornegal. Oh, gets away. Bornegal slid a little bit early. Didn't have a whole lot of momentum getting the third. I thought it, for a second he wasn't going to get there. But he did, but two out. Now here's Salvatore. Walked in the first, struck out in the second. This is the third trip through the order for Florida State as they begin it here with Salvatore. Go back and hear the on-field mics. Ball gets away from the catch. Coach Martin, you hear Mike Martin, get over there. <laughs> He's in the game big time, as always. Fastball away, makes the count three and one. Salvatore looking for his 20th, rather now 21st with the walk earlier today, 21st walk on the season. This is pitch number 70 for McKendry. And it's ball four. Second walk of the day for Mike Salvatore, and now a guy who can really do some damage in Jackson Luke, who after his last at-bat should be swinging a pretty confident one, will step up to the plate. But first, here comes a meeting from Miami. J.D. Artiega going to the mound again. Experienced a bunch of these 
matchups. Florida State, Miami went back when he played. I believe he was playing triple-A ball. Chip Morris had to make a change in pitching staff, coaching staff. And asked him, you want to come be my pitching coach? I need to know now. He was still playing. Gave up the career to maybe making the big leagues. JPR Diego, pitching coach for Miami. So he has a word with McKendry. And again, McKendry coming in today with that 5-5 five and five record. He's had those eye-popping with good performances. The win against Florida, the complete game against Clemson. The win against Notre Dame, the win against UVA, but there have been teams that have been able to crack the code. And so far, Florida State has had all the answers and have been able to manufacture runs, and they've got runners on the corners here with Bornegal at third, and now Salvatore earning a walk and is standing at first. Jackson lose the type of hitter. Florida State here first and third, two out. That looks for a mistake, looks the time to go for the juggler. And again, he's early in the only in the fourth inning, but he could give you the big blast to really wick this, get this crowd going. He's a guy that not only not lacking in terms of confidence in general, but he's got a 360 batting average against Miami in his career, including a couple of home runs, including the one that was a walk-off the last time the Canes were here in game three. Big swing there. That's exactly what he was trying to do once again. It's two and one. Henry is very stingy on the long ball, only giving up one all year. 65 innings or so. Two and two goes the count as Luke fouls that ball off of his leg. And Dietis will come on out a couple of steps at least to give a signal to McKendry. is 21 RBI in ACC play coming into this series, but goes down swinging. So another strikeout for McKendry, but another run comes in for Florida State. Rafael Bornegal, the RBI double to right field and off of the screen. It is 3-0 Florida State over Miami. As we take a look at our game recap here in Tallahassee, Chip, different pitcher, similar story, seven strikeouts for C.J. Van Eyck. There's been seven for McKendry as well, but as we take a look at some of those strikeouts, Florida State has been able to string together some success. Cal Raleigh and a fielding error here by the pitcher McKendry would play Bornegal, or rather Salvatore in the first, but here's Bornegal going off the fence, and that would make it 3-0 Florida State on the RBI double. Stephen Wells would come in to score. Seminoles have played FSU baseball to a tee, getting on base, manufacturing runs, and on four hits, they've played at three. Big keys you mentioned, leadoff hitter getting on for three innings. Florida State, through. again, those one runs add up, and get three right there on the board for the Noles. And yesterday, Florida State with three hits all game through four innings. They've had four today. So some more success at the plate for Florida State in Miami. We'll see if they can get things going in a hurry. A lot of young fans in the park. Cheering on the Knolls and undoubtedly some in the park cheering on the Canes. C.J. Van Eyck resets. Clunan goes first pitch swing and that'll be a 6-3 ground out on one pitch. This has been an efficient outing for C.J. Van Eyck. Pitch count now just at 46. Van Eyck's coming out party was on March 25th in relief, 4.1 innings. Couple of hits, big five strikeouts, and the roll to Plarcy ended up winning the ball game. He's had some good starts, good outings. This is his best one so far. Showing all signs of confidence. Strike one there to Amditas. A fastball over the plate, clocking in at 93. Amditas flew out back in the second. That ball's 
foul, so Ambedis will have to make his way back to the plate here. Open up our Doug Vines all over that play, running out there, getting in the grass, setting himself up just in case that ball may roll back. You gotta love being around these umpires because these guys know what it's like, Florida State Miami. They they know it's a big ball game and they enjoy working it. The guys are great to be around. I spent some time with them before the game today. Experienced crew here. One and two to Amditas. He'll check his swing and is called for the strikeout anyway. Eighth strikeout today for C.J. Van Eyck. The respect these umpires have for both these head coaches is tremendous. And they think it's an honor for them to be a work this series, and that's what I was trying to get to. Bottom of the order here is Raymond Gill takes strike one. He struck out back in the third. And that ball pulled foul. And Ike is relying on that breaking ball. He is throwing it right now. Sitting back, not cruising, but sitting back with his three-run lead and then throwing it in there and throwing it hard. He's a hammer. Got that hammer going. Calling time out there. Ike likes to work quick. His den fitters love it when the pitcher works quick. Two guys in a row that like to work quick because Parrish doesn't waste a whole lot of time either. We were out of here in two hours and 38 minutes yesterday, and down goes Gill. 96 miles an hour on that fastball, and that is eight pitches for C.J. Van Eyck in another 1-2-3 inning. The strikeout count now up to nine. How about this showing for Florida State? They still lead it, 3 nothing. Back here in Tallahassee, you're looking at the Florida State dugout and the Seminoles taking in the programming on their brand new video board, the second largest in the NCAA behind that of Mississippi State. You see Tyler Holton looking on, as well as Rafael Bornegal, whose RBI double made it 3 0. You see the programming there. Fans taking here. on this the. Is a new uh, one. Exactly. Mendoza did popcorn toss in the tradition room, and he's trying to beat him here. The number two got eight. And this guy's trying to get the entire row behind him involved, so I don't think he's going to beat Drew. But that video board, 1,981 total square feet, the second largest in the country, seven times larger than the previous one, cost a cool $1.3 million. But if there's ever a program here on campus that deserves some new technology and all the flashy gadgets it's this one and there's Drew Mendoza I'm sure pretty pleased with himself beating a fan that's not always the case a lot of times these fans have been getting the better of the yeah. players but he will very contently sit on his bucket which has become his thing here and Rhett Applin will step up to the plate oh by the way with our expanded section B it is time here in the bottom of the fifth <laughs> there he is. With a Mountie leading the way for O Canada. 34 years. This will be the loudest O Canada you'll ever hear in this ballpark. 40th anniversary of the Animals. And Red Applin will step up to the plate to lead the charge here. The count 1 and 0 to him. That's a ground ball to the first base side. Should be a routine 4-3 ground out and is. So a couple of pitches there, and Rhett Applin is retired. That'll bring up Cal Raleigh. They go all out over there in Section B, don't they? Some people probably have a mic up there section B with them tonight. <laughs> well, yesterday Mike Martin was telling Connor Grady and company, have fun. It's easy to have fun when you have fans like that. Oh, yeah. Entertaining. It should be fun. <laughs> High fly ball toward right field, out to the wall, and that'll get out of the glove of Clunan. Cal Raleigh pulls up at second. 
So the Seminoles, a little one-out magic here. Another extra base hit. This time it's Cal Raleigh. The first pitch swing, and looked like he didn't get all of it. Just enough out there just off his glove and right. Only the tenth double all year McHenry's given up. Had a chance to catch it. See how high it goes here on the right field wall. Fighting the sun just out beyond his glove there. Probably running all the way. Fighting that sun. This time of day is tough. Set a little bit more toward the western sky. Not directly in his eyes, but it's still enough to see the reflection off his glasses. Freshman out there in right. Sean going back 15 years ago when the stadium was rebuilt. Expanded, dug out from Florida State, went from first, third base side to the first base side. A lot of fans called up want to know where the animals are going to be sitting. Someone didn't <laughs> want to sit with them. Someone would sit away so they could watch what goes on in Section B up there in Section 4 and 5 at Dick Hauser Stadium. They have their own mailing address. They Section do. B, USA. They get mail. <laughs> Why not? Why not? There they go. Drew Mendoza up at the Get plate. And after Taylor Walls left, you have, a, you have to have a cutout of somebody. So they call Drew, Drew Baca. And Drew Baca takes strike one on the outside corner. You and I spent some time over there. Took the Florida State golf cart over there. We spent some time in their annual 40th anniversary party over there. We spoke to one young lady who was traveling on an airplane back from Japan watching our broadcast a couple weeks ago on the, on the airplane. People all over the world watch these broadcasts. I'll tell you what, there's some pretty good resemblance there between <laughs> Drew Baca and Drew yeah. Mendoza. Impressive work <laughs> from the folks over in Section B. They add to the collection. They add Mounties. They add Floaties. They add all sorts of different things. That's another strike on the outside corner to Mendoza. The count evens at two. Way to decree to the animals today. You've been doing this for 40 years. You've had this party for 40 years. Stop the party and get to the ballpark for the first pitch. Which tonight. We'll show it later on. First pitch at 555. A lot of them made it. Two and two, the count to Mendoza. Same spot. This time the count goes full. Cal Raleigh is on at second after the double to right. Fourth inning, the Seminoles have had a runner in scoring position. That's on the ground and into center field. Cal Raleigh will round third, and he's going to come home. Raleigh scores, no problem. It's 4 nothing. but Mendoza is going to get picked off at second. Got a little over-eager on the throw home, so it's going to cost Florida State an out despite the fact that they played a run. Mendoza had a good turn, but he stopped. He stopped and turned and watched the play to go to the plate. Drove it up the middle. See if we get this the whole time through. Mendoza, you're going to see Mendoza halfway here stops, and then he starts going, and that's where he made the mistake. you got to commit to one thing or another. So once again, the Seminoles, this time it wasn't the leadoff man, but they get somebody in scoring position. And they played a runoff of it. So it's 4 nothing Florida State. Stephen Wells up at the plate. Going back to the previous play, Mendoza took a big turn because the first baseman, Raymond Gill, was in for the relay. The second baseman that went for the ball at the middle. So there's nobody at first base. He could take a big turn, but he stopped. And once you stop, you're not going to get going again that quickly. And Stephen Wells goes down on three pitches. Not his best at bat, but the Seminoles find a way to plate another one off the bat of Drew Mendoza. It is 4 nothing Florida State. And that O Canada inning works to perfection. Seminoles plate another run following that tradition unlike any other here in Tallahassee. Seminoles lead it by four here at home. Back here in Tallahassee as we start the sixth inning. 
got one more tomorrow between Miami and the 14th ranked Seminoles. It will be at 1 o'clock Eastern time also on the ACC Network Extra. The latest installment of this rivalry series will conclude tomorrow. Seminoles trying to clinch the series today, but a whole lot of different things on the line. It will be at the very least the last meeting between two legendary head coaches in the regular season, Jim Morris of Miami, Mike Martin of Florida State. And we can talk about the elephant in the room. If Florida State hangs on to win this ball game, Mike Mark will tie Augie Garrido with the all-time win. Tomorrow will be a huge walk-up purchase for his tickets. A lot of people going to show up for that ball game tomorrow afternoon. Florida, especially Florida State hangs on with this four-run lead. I wasn't going to start talking about it until I got the okay from you to mention it, but <laughs> there is a possibility of that. I'm not even going to mention yeah. it directly. Because it's kind of it's kind of like the no hitter. You don't mention well, it. Got a plan. But two and zero the count here to Zamora, and there he is. Fastball outside. Zamora grounded out in the first, flew out in the third, and earns a four-pitch walk here in the sixth. First time since the second that Miami has gotten their leadoff man aboard. This is the very top of the order here for Miami. Always talk about the third time through the order. This is the third time, as you said, Zamora leading off the inning with the walk. Here's Michael Burns. That is five balls in a row from C.J. Van Eyck. So Cal Raleigh makes a veteran trip out to the mound to try to settle down the youngster. Veteran trip, as you mentioned right there. Raleigh goes out. Hey, a lot of times these pitchers get through the fifth. I got, I got it. I got the I'm pitcher of record now. A lot of times pitchers struggle in the fifth inning. Now he's through the fifth, start thinking, if I can just get through, I got me a W. You got to pitch every, every hitter, every, every pitch, every at bat. 58 pitches, 41 have been strikes. Second day in a row, we've seen a Seminole starter with great command. Sometimes you get a catcher guy who goes out there and kind of talks him. Sometimes you go out and you know, kind of give him a little a foot, in the, foot in the backside. Let's go, stay with what you've been doing. Ball in. It's the sixth ball in a row that Van Eyck has thrown. Fastball inside once again, this time called strike one. Back with a hard fastball in on a 2-1 count. Back to even here, 2-2. Two -two. Burns and yesterday's starter on the mound for Miami, Jed Bargfeld, both were at Wichita State, both went to Cisco Junior College, both now at Miami, and both co-captains. So on a young roster, this guy has been especially when the Canes are on offense, the leader that they've been looking for. Two and two the count above the zone. They start the runner here. I don't know if that was down four. They may not, but Miami is very difficult to turn a double play. Opposing clubs have only turned 21 double plays on Miami this year. Paris and Florida State. Battle. Florida State has grounded into 37 double plays. The fan out there making a the catch. The count remains full. Good battle here. The 
They do start the runner. Here's a chance for the Seminoles to turn two, six, four, three. Salvatore made that flip in time to get the force at second, and Durr had all kinds of time to make the play at first. Coming back from six straight balls, come back to get two outs on one pitch, get the ground ball, big time flip, big time throw by Durr at first. Pitcher's best friend. And Quinones, an aggressive approach there. First pitch swinging and connecting on a base hit into right. How big is that, getting that out? Older ball players get more experienced, better ball players. You always try to turn that double play. Some, sometimes you may not think you got it. You got it right there. Get that first out. That second out's gravy. Florida State capitalized on both of those and got two outs. That was huge here in the sixth inning. Clayton Kwiatkowski, the left-hander, warming up in the pen for Florida State. We'll see here how Van Eyck can get through Romy Gonzalez. Pitch count still just at 66. Not sure what Mike Bell and Mike Martin and company have made up in terms of what a max pitch count would be for this guy, but so far so good. Got himself in a little trouble this inning, but the double play helped the cause. And now ahead in the count here to Gonzalez with two away. Three hits given up today from Van Eyck. Looking for his first strikeout of the inning. Not going to get it there. The strikeout would be Van Eyck's tenth of the game. Chopper to Salvatore, plays to first, and in time. So at 70 pitches, Van Eyck gets through six innings. Miami only three hits to show for it. Durr, Albert, and Bornegal do up. Fans looking on here at Dickhauser Stadium. And Florida State up 4-0 over the visiting Miami Hurricanes as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Lots of smiles on the faces of those wearing garnet and gold. Seminoles picking up their 30th win of the season yesterday against the Canes and one heck of a pitcher's duel between Bargfeld and Parrish. That could be marginally distracting if you're McKendry. Tell you what, some of these vendors here that are passing out Lemonade and cotton candy to the fans. I, apparently, they double as entertainers as well. <laughs> they don't pass it out. They're selling it. True, true. They're selling it. There, there you are putting your yeah. Deox cap on. I got you. <laughs> they have fun. They're entertaining as well. Not a boring moment in this ballpark, I promise you, especially tonight. 2-0 the count to Durr. And strike there to make it two and one. That is pitch number 91. Some folks being sent down to the Miami bullpen. I believe Daniel Fetterman making his way down. Indeed it is Fetterman making his way down to the bullpen for the Canes. And there's Jim Morris looking on. As his starter has gone 92 pitches. And hasn't even recorded an out here in the sixth. As we mentioned, six out of ten outings is start for him. He's gone 100 plus pitches. If your ball club's not scoring, you're down four runs. Keep him out there. Keep you out of the bullpen. Give it up one run, four different, five different innings, four different innings, excuse me. Hard hit ground ball, but a nice play there from Gonzalez to 
to retire Dirk. Florida State has scored in every inning except the second. And on base, make, getting the job done. The second inning, the only inning that Florida State wasn't able to get somebody on base before they recorded two outs. Seminoles were able to pick up a couple of hits there, but then a, another strikeout would eliminate the threat. Swing and a miss from Albert, and now another one. Makes it 0-2. Sometimes a pitcher with a changeup, the more pitches he gets, the more effective that changeup gets. It has been effective since the first inning. He's getting a piece of it there with two strikes. Albert's base hit in the second. Went opposite field. Pitch count now at 97. And 98 is good for strike three. Approaching 100 pitches, but again, he's throwing, I bet he's throwing 45 change-ups. It doesn't take much out of you. Just all, all just throwing it and letting it come out of, off your fingertips, off your ring finger and your little, little finger. Getting a lot of movement, getting a lot of sink. Seen 19 combined strikeouts from these two starting pitchers as Bornegal lays off that pitch from McKendry. Greg Vines has had a very good plate tonight. He's seen a lot of change-ups on plate umpire. A lot of called strikes. And not any complaints I've heard seen so far out of either side. It's worked a good plate. Breaking ball there from McKendry called ball one. Look right back to it. This could be the first one, two, three inning all game for McKendry. Fastball there, and the count goes full. First fastball we've seen to Bornegal here. Bornegal with the RBI double a couple of innings ago. Back to the notion that McKendry, this would be his first one, two, three inning, only saw four hitters in the last inning, but that's largely because Drew Mendoza, after his RBI single, hesitated trying to turn and turn that into a double. And like you mentioned back then, Chip, you got to commit to one thing or another. He got thrown out at second. Full count, Bornegal pokes it into center field. Got a chance. Wow. And that is Zamora. I mean, the speed of Zamora all weekend long so far has been something to behold. Nobody home, but Zamora got there in a hurry. Reyes, Escala, and Clunan do up. Current president of Florida State University, John Thrasher, and his wife, Jean, on hand here in the top of the seventh inning at Dickhauser Stadium. Tickets are going to be hard to come by tomorrow if Florida State has a chance to get Mike Martin into the record books, but you can guarantee those two will have a seat anywhere they want to sit here in the house. But a, a tremendous supporter of all things athletics and all things Florida State has been President Thrasher. He's been wonderful for the university, a politician here in the state of Florida, and all the things that are happening around campus, whether it be facilities-wise for athletics or facilities-wise for the university as a whole have just been tremendous. They're going to be redoing the entire student union, and that's going to be one of the latest renovations. They built some new dorms all over campus, and we've seen some of the facilities upgrades on the athletic side of things as well. His office is one of the few offices that I personally take the next year's baseball schedule to. <laughs> Try to make as many games as he can. It's not just a Saturday night. He's here whenever he can get here. It's always good to see the president, Miss Jean, here. And he makes his rounds, too. You'll see him at volleyball. You'll see him at softball. Shows his support to every single team. A very involved human here on this campus. One 
Once again, Van Eyck ahead in the count as he's so often been tonight. Ray is trying to battle here, but he struck out in both of his prior plate appearances in the second and in the fourth. Reyes is going to keep his own dugout on high alert. Ground ball to Salvatore. This will be another 6-3 ground out for this Florida State defense. It ended the prior inning that way, and it'll start this one the same. We're on a restaurant. About a month ago on a road trip, my other job is director of baseball operations. Somehow, CJ sit beside me in dinner. I started talking to him. I said, hey, what's your best pitch? A curveball. I said, yeah, I've seen your curveball. When are you going to throw it? And he looked at me and said, when are you going to throw it? I kind of challenged him a little bit. It was a little fun trying to bring the old coach out of me. <laughs> I said, has anybody ever hit your curveball hard? No. I said, throw it. Yeah. He's been throwing it pretty good since the Carolina series. Pitched well. Give him a little confidence. Scala fouls off that fastball. It's one and one. A couple weeks later, someone hit one. A fastball off the, the bat. He's throwing about 96, 97, and drilled him right in the back at 108 off the bat. He had a big bruise in his back. Check swing there from Scala, and this time the call from the first base umpire, Danny Everett, is that he did come around. So it's one and two. He's throwing it there, just off the plate. Had him check swing the previous pitch. Van Eyck looking for a strikeout number 10. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Got him. Van Eyck into double digit strikeouts here tonight. You get our research staff on how many the last time Florida State back to back nights had two pitchers with 10 plus strikeouts. 10 strikeouts or more. And right away, Clunin tries to pick up the base hit. And this is where, in my observation, that was a hit anyway, but in terms of just everyday fielding errors when Florida State has been keen to make them, they have been toward that first base side. Guys trying to rifle throws in there. Applin's got a workout this season. I'll put it that way. <laughs> True there. Tremendous effort by Durr. Watch him knock this ball down. Ball was hit well. Extend right there. Got a chance. Get to your feet. Pick it up. Threw it from the knees. Don't force it, son. Don't throw it. And if he passes first. You teach your ball players don't dive on a ball that you don't have a chance. He had a chance there to get about the ball, to gotten the ball a little bit quicker. So ball through the left side, the shortstop dives for it. Don't dive if you're not going to be able to get an out. Hurt yourself sometimes. Stand the arm, hurt your shoulder. And if you get a runner on second, don't let that ball get through. It's totally different there. That right. aspect. Knock it down. Do not let it out of the infield. Quickly, MD is behind the count, 0-2. Oh On the ground to Mendoza, played a second for the force, and the Seminoles retire the side. Then despite giving up a base hit to Dylan Clunan, C.J. Van Eyck remains unscathed. Top of the order due up for Florida State when we come back.
moment to reflect and for perspective here in Tallahassee. Regardless, as you mentioned it, Chip, I think nobody could say it any better. Whether you wear garnet or green, you can always cheer for the red, white, and blue. And some folks who are pretty good at cheering are the animals of Section B. We've talked about it time and time again. 40-year anniversary. There's your man Mongo, and boy, they could really have a party over there. Every day they walk. Look at the big guy right here. It's not his first rodeo, I promise you that. <laughs> Let the party begin. Oh, gold uniforms, love it. And those gold uniforms. That's a trip to Omaha right there with the gold uniforms. I was going to say, and those gold uniforms look a little different. And there's your man right there all these years later. And hey, guess what? He can still do just like he did back then. And there you are, Chip, oh, yeah, taking I a look get on. Man's moment. And speaking of you, there you and I are at their wiffle ball tournament. We're, gonna, we're not going to pay attention to that other part of the wiffle ball tournament, but. It was an honor to be there today. It absolutely was. And for more on the animals of Section B, here's Catherine Phillips. Take it away, KP. Thank you, Sean. I am in the loudest spot in the ballpark, joined by the Section B animals. This is Dayton. He flew in from Denver to celebrate their 40th anniversary this weekend. Dayton, how did the animals tradition begin? The animals started with a man named Saul, FSU's number one fan. He used to come to the stands and throw day-old donuts to us and all this other stuff, so we threw him back. He got mad at us, but then we gave him a birthday cake, beautiful birthday cake with candles and everything. And he goes and we sing him happy birthday, he goes to cut the cake, it's a fake cake. So he starts getting the icing and he's throwing it at us, calling, you guys are a bunch of animals, you're a bunch of animals. And that's how the animals were officially named. All right, now you guys are known for some unique chants. You've got K-Time, Rag Arm, but some of them, the meaning isn't as obvious. Oh, Canada, you sing that in the fifth inning. Explain the significance of that to me. Well, Canada started back during the Olympics of 1988 when the Olympics were going on in Canada. There were guys out here watching a baseball game, and they had, they had heard the Canadian National Anthem being sung so much that they just started humming during the game in the fifth inning. We had a rally, we won the game, they did it the next day. Look, and then it just went from there. Every, in the fifth inning, things just seem to happen when we sing O Canada. All right, now I have to ask, if I wanted to become a Section B animal, I imagine it's a rigorous process. What would I do? You just have to come to all the games, hang out with us and support the cheers. We'll even give you a song book. But we make new cheers and we make new songs every day. So, it's a piece of cake. All right, well, these guys have fun, so I may just hang out here, but Sean, I'm gonna send it back to you. Well, KP, I wanna hang out over there too. Why wouldn't I? It looks like it's a real party. And as you heard, new songs, one of the new songs with Salvatore on the roster was for Mike Salvatore, and guess who came through for him? And now the pass ball will advance him into scoring position. Animal magic. Correct myself, that was a wild pitch, not a fast ball either way. Not the ideal start here for Daniel Fetterman. Fetterman with a 2.40 ERA through 48 and two-thirds innings of work on the season. Has struck out 46, only walked 16 opponents, only hitting 198 on him. But don't tell Salvatore that. He's already in scoring position, and Luca heading the count 1-0. that piece on the animals they pulled out some archive video that was big time stuff that stuff was even high def they made it look like it was high def <laughs> that's some of the stuff was 30 plus years ago take tip of the cap there to yeah. our producer Wyatt I was standing by when he was pulling that video also Kyle Parsons working his tail off back there in the, in the control room and I'll say tail because the other day when I was talking to Mike Martin, he said he can tell you and promise me this, that uh, Coach Morris is going to coach his, quote, Fanny off. So from <laughs> Fanny, from Mike Martin, I'll say tail for Kyle. We've got it all covered. Two and one the count to Jackson Luke. Big swing there. I had a moment on the bus with Coach Martin on the way to Stetson last week and I found out that Saturday night was open for 
a first pitch presentation. I went to him and have a little conversation. I said, Mike, <laughs> I don't call him Mike a whole lot. I said, Mike, you got a chance to recognize the animals in front of these wonderful fans here at Florida State. Let's make this happen. He looked at me and said, it's going to be clean and classy, as he always is. And they have been wonderful today, as always. This crowd has been fantastic all day long. But Jackson Luke striking out for the second time in as many of his recent at-bats. Struck out in the fourth and now here again in the seventh. So back to the new pitcher, Fetterman, who has relieved McKendry after he went well above 100 pitches. He finally gets his first at, at out rather here in that Jackson Luke at bat. Again, Fetterman coming into today with that 2.40 ERA. And Rhett Applin will step up to the plate. And Amditas on top of that one. And Salvatore stays at second. Here's the voice of Mike Martin on that ball in the dirt run. It's 2-0 to Applin. Applin struck out, grounded out. And laid down a sack bunt to advance Jackson Luke into scoring position. And Luke would eventually come in to score. As we take a look at Dick Hauser Stadium again, still hardly a seat to be had. An impressive showing from the Seminole Faithful. There's been a postseason kind of vibe in the air, this energy coming from the crowd. Great point. It has been too, since yesterday. Young people, I don't even know, walk in the ballpark. You ready for the big game? I started thinking, hey, okay, let's make this happen here. When you consider the bleachers yeah. where a lot of students sit, they got final exams coming yeah. up and they're still here at the park. Study break. Good pitch there on the outside corner from Fetterman. Some members of the crowd here, none too pleased. They've seen some similar pitches called balls. Goes full now to Applin. And down he goes. So Fetterman has settled in here. And after that shaky start where he gave up a base hit to Salvatore and then the wild pitch advanced him into scoring position, a couple of strikeouts, and now the Miami staff has 11 tonight. And that's been the thing for Miami this season. There have been plenty of times that their pitching has been, at the very least, very solid. But they have not been able to get their bats going. Ball club hitting as a team coming in tonight's ball game at 243 overall, 253 in conference. Florida State's pitching has been very much dominant on Miami. Owen won the count to Cal Raleigh. 
step out. And if you didn't think that the Drew Mendoza cutouts were enough, they've got some for Cal Raleigh too. They're hoping that he will shake and bake this baseball. And he's popped it up. Escala backs up and can't make the play. Five, nothing. Got on his heels a little bit. Raleigh was severe, extremely disappointed. He swung the bat, put the complete spin at the plate. He just missed a pitch, but he ran it out, got the second base, and the ball hit the ground. Watch Raleigh spin around when he swings. Watch this. He's so mad at himself, he missed it. But he is. I better run. I better run. Watch him. Got a freshman in second. You got a freshman in right field. In this environment. Drew Mendoza now at the plate. And Raleigh will rep replace Mike Salvatore in scoring position. That officially ruled an RBI double for Cal Raleigh. Two and zero. The count now to Mendoza. His last time at the plate, he connected in an RBI single. Hesitated as he rounded first. Could have very easily been an RBI double, but that hesitation cost him, and he was thrown out at second. Wow. No doubt there. Florida State has taken full advantage of having the extra swings, the extra at bats. That ball that was dropped, it was not caught there. And Raleigh's double proved big time fly here for Mendoza. Tony, think he got all of this one? Sometimes you just watch it. You don't have to talk about how far it's going. No, just not at all. There's sometimes you can't even sound as excited as you want to because you're too busy picking your jaw up off the floor in the process. He'll get the curtain call from the oh, Seminole yeah. faithful. That young man needed one a big fly, too. And guess what? You can't run yourself out of the ending there. True there. He's hit the ball hard. Hit the ball hard last night. Hit the ball hard twice today. They've been chipping away one run here in the first, the third, fourth, fifth, huge three run seventh. Crooked numbers, we call it. <laughs> Promos here in uh, Tallahassee incorporate eight strikeouts, you get queso, 10 runs, you get chicken from Chick fil A. Seminoles are now in chicken mode at this point in time. <laughs> at least the fans are. One and two the count to Wells. He continues to foul him off. But Fetterman had only given up 13 earned runs on the season. 
in this inning alone. He's given up nearly a quarter of that. Fastball up and in. And Stephen Wells, who's got a couple of strikeouts and a walk today. Will look to continue what has been the most successful inning so far for Florida State, but he goes down swinging for the second time in three innings. But Wells goes down swinging after three more runs come in for Florida State, and a jaw dropper, no doubter. Drop the bat, drop your jaw, drop everything. Drew Mendoza plates a couple. It is seven nothing Seminoles here at home against their rival Miami Hurricanes. They're cruising in Tallahassee. As we take a look at the Seminoles' latest home run hitter and we take a look at the Seminoles now up seven, nothing as we head to the top of the eighth inning here in Tallahassee. We'll take a look at this little statistic here throughout the first 16 games in which Florida State in the first 14 were 14 and 0. Only seven home runs for the Seminoles, nearly 40 here for them in the last handful. But that, an absolute shot from Raymond Gill off the top of the scoreboard. That might be the highest home run off that scoreboard I have seen. That thing was still climbing when it hit the top of the scoreboard. I don't think a single baseball player from Florida State moved. That ball was hit. Looking fastball, he got it, and he gave that ball a ride. Second home run this year for Gill. Broke the string of a whole bunch of innings, not scoring runs. First run just so he can. Wow. I mean, very top. Wow. It cleared the scoreboard, I believe. It did not hit the upright. It was holding the Seminole logo. Warrior logo. Freddy Zamora popped that ball up toward Mendoza. He's calling everybody off and is underneath it. One down. And that'll bring up Michael Burns. Got to give up the home run that I came back in and just pumped another one in there. Got pop up, got the first out. Start counting the outs here and in get in the eighth inning. Ball strike there at 92 miles an hour to Burns, who recorded another base hit today. He had a couple yesterday, but then in his most recent at bat, grounded into a 6 4 3. Pitcher's best friend. After Zamora picked up a leadoff walk, that was a couple innings ago. How efficient Van Ike has been tonight. Only 90 pitches here in the eighth inning. Tell you what, that was big too because right after that, King Jonas picked up a base hit. That ball lined over the hand of Durr. So Burns continues what has been largely a very good weekend for him. DH, number 31. And while Burns can, can keep a solid week at the plate going, let's take another look at this. We've blown this up. That hit the top of the L in Seminoles. Let's go over the net. There's a netting up there. You can see it. Very thin netting. That ball just got over the top of the net. <laughs> Blast. 365 to left field. That ball might have gotten a car across the street. That hit the scoreboard. parking lot that you speak of, a shared parking lot between the Tolly Gymnasium, the Leech, where a lot of the students here go to stay in shape. They also share the parking lot with the volleyball arena that the FSU volleyball team uses, as well as the softball parking lot. Softball team checking in top five RPI. It's been a weekend in a very cool South Bend, Indiana, Notre Dame. 
Saw some of the baseball game on up there. And there's a lot of heavy jackets, ski caps on. <laughs> Breaking out Mike Mark. Yep, and Clayton Bukowski continues to warm up in the bullpen. Mike Martin made an early trip out to the mound back in the second inning after Gonzalez was hit by a pitch and then a scholar recorded a double. After he made that trip out to the mound, Van Eyck was able to settle in and get a strike out and a fly out to right field to eliminate the threat. The veteran skipper from Florida State mentioned in his last night comment, post game comment, talking about this game, this series, a ball game is never over. Again, Miami with one run here in the eighth. Again, it's Florida State six run lead, but again, last night game came down, bases loaded situation. Florida State came out with two big strikeouts by Jonas Calero. They count three and oh here to Quinones. What would Mike Martin love for this young man on the mound to finish this ball game? Get out of this inning and finish this ball game. Fully rested bullpen going into Sunday. Here's your fastball strike. Quinones with a base hit in his last at bat. Whole lot of air there, it's full. They got a little help there, ball a little bit up, it swung at it though. Three two count here. Pitch number 98 fouled off. <laughs> that might be fake here, but he's got more of it than I do. Just past the glove of Mendoza. Miami's going to keep the string of momentum going. Burns. Will get to third, and that is a double runners in scoring position for the Canes. Third baseman, number 10. Did not throw that pitch. He's been throwing his fastball 92, 93, 94 miles an hour. That was a 90 mile an hour fastball. Did not put the extra on it. Trying to hit with it. But not much on it. Pulled it down the left field line for a double. Be a huge ovation here for Van Eyck. That's going to be it for him as Mike Martin goes out. 99 pitches for C.J. Van Eyck. He's gone seven and a third. Runners in scoring position for Miami. We'll be back in a moment. C.J. Van Eyck's day is done at 99 pitches, but he made the most of it through seven and a third, struck out nine. And this is one of those performances, you know deep down that you got it in you, but until you have a day like this, it's one of those wait and see, I'm gonna wait and see if the proof is in the pudding kind of things, and C.J. Van Eyck continues to get more and more impressive the deeper he gets into this first season here with the Garnet and Gold. And this, in a moment like this against an opponent like your rival Miami, the best we've seen from him so far. Crowd gave him an ovation as he could the ball field and quickly calling that initials of CJ, CJ, CJ. A little curtain call. And a freshman right-hander. So he will give way to Clayton Kwiatkowski. And we'll take one more look at Van Eyck's line. Seven and a third, gave up seven hits. The one earned run from Raymond Gill hitting the top of the scoreboard. Only walked one. I'll correct myself, he struck out 10. And the man who is replacing him on the mound is Clayton Kwiatkowski. So Kwiatkowski inherits a one-out runners in scoring position circumstance here in Tallahassee as he continues to get warmed up. 6'2 sophomore out of Tampa, Florida, slimmed down from last season. A lot of guys on the Seminole roster from the Tampa area. This is 19th appearance. An ERA of 3.81 through 26 innings, 21 hits, 17 walks, 33 strikeouts. The 
Knowles looking on from the fencing right at the edge of their dugout. We'll see what Kwiatkowski can do with runners in scoring position. And now Romy Gonzalez at the plate. Gonzalez, aside from being hit by a pitch to lead off the second, has not had much success at the plate today. A fly out in the fourth, a ground out in the sixth. And now here he is behind the count here in the eighth, 0-1. Ball down down the third. Mm -hmm. Mike Martin is not afraid to bring in a left hander to face this predominantly right handed hit in Miami order. Only one left hander in the lineup, Clunan. They threw all right handers at Florida State's left hander starter last night. That ball popped up. Wells get to it, he can throw it. And Burns will think twice about trying to come home. Heck of a throw there from Stephen Wells to eliminate any ideas or possibilities for the Hurricanes. Experienced Florida State crowd knows that young man out there. Tremendous arm. He threw the, the big game in, in the ACC tournament last year. And they were waiting on the Miami to runner to go down six and wait for him to make that throw, and he let that ball go. I was just about to say, yeah. if not for that throw in the yes. ACC tournament, what might have been a Florida State season then? Very much so. He was a pitcher as, freshman, as a freshman. Tremendous arm. I always said an outfielder, especially in this ballpark in right field, you charge the ball, it's a very much an offensive play when you're on defense because if a guy can throw it like Wells, you can prevent guys from taking offensive chances. That makes sense, but it does for me. Big swing there from Danny Reyes. He got a whole lot of nothing. It's one and one. I was hoping that Durr, who was going after that ball, would get out of Wells' way, and he did. Second baseman went deep for that ball. Two and one the count to Reyes. He settles back in. Seminoles trying to limit the damage here. And that ball popped up as well. Salvatore pointing it out. And Albert underneath it to eliminate the threat. Runners in scoring position for Miami. And they can't do anything with them. The one run they do score here in the top of the eighth. An absolute shot from Raymond Gill. He says, Drew Mendoza, I see you the homer to right field, and I raise you one to left field off the L in Seminoles. It is 7-1 Florida State. Full moon here in Tallahassee, and if you look real close, you might find that baseball that Drew Mendoza sent into the stratosphere. <laughs> moon shot. 7-1 Florida State as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Here in the second game of this three-game series, Seminoles looking to be in pretty good shape to take the series from their in-state foe, Miami. Full moon, so maybe the animals are a little more rowdy this weekend, and Florida State hangs on. Watch out for Sunday. Tell you what, there has been, as we were talking about earlier, a postseason kind of vibe and energy in the air. I would expect nothing short of a super regional kind of atmosphere here tomorrow with a lot on the line for Florida State. The new pitcher for Miami is Jeremy Cook, a freshman out of West, uh, Western Florida. 6'1", 205, making his 19th appearance, just like Clayton Kwiatkowski, a 3.57 ERA over 17 and two-thirds innings. Some of the other numbers, 18 hits, 14 walks, and 16 strikeouts. Amditas with a few words for Cook. And 
he will square off with Nick Durr to get things started here in the bottom of the eighth. They were also led off for Florida State a couple of innings ago, grounded out. It was the only 1-2-3 inning for Miami's defense. A chance at the 1-2-3 inning here to get through the eighth and not have to turn the order over. Durr 0 for 3 today with a couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Batting average now at 218. Pumping some fastballs in there. That one at 92. The count one and two to Durr. Got your knees on the black of the plate. Good pitch. Good battling getting a piece of that one. Breaking ball there. Fouled off. Count remains one and two to Durr. The entertainment continues on in the grandstands. And meanwhile, Durr battles the count back full. <laughs> increased business right there. <laughs> Fun to be had at the park. And Nick Durr nearly wore that 90 mile an hour fastball, but that's a good at bat for him. Behind the count, 0 and 2. Cook's not afraid to bring that fastball in, especially the right handers. Here comes Albert facing the left hander. Seminoles once again getting their leadoff man aboard. Fifth time in these eight innings that Florida State's been able to do that. Here's Reese Albert ahead in the count, 1-0. Oh. Singled back in the second. He struck out his two plate appearances since. And now he earns a four-pitch walk. Pinch hitter for Florida State coming up to the plate is going to be Jonathan Foster and Jim Morris. Came out past that top step and heads back to the dugout and stays behind the fence. Now Morris himself will make that trip out to the mound. No activity, so to speak, down there in the bullpen. But it does appear that Greg Street is heading down that way and somebody will be coming in for the Hurricanes. Cooper Hammond gets the call from Jim Morris and company. He'll be the new pitcher and we'll be right back. So the new pitcher for Miami is Cooper Hammond. Hammond out of Venice, Florida. Went to Venice Senior High School. He's a senior here at the University of Miami. One of just a handful of upperclassmen making his 20th appearance. A 2.21 ERA through 20 and a third. He's given up 29 hits. His only walk two and was struck out 15. So Hammond will continue to get warm here. Miami now on their fourth pitcher of this ball game. Crowd still here and in full force. There might be a few more open seats out in the bleachers, but we're talking just a handful 
a lot of folks content to stick around and, and watch the rest of this one. So Cooper Hammond pitching here. He leads the club and saves with three for Miami. Good for Florida State to see a side armor like this. You never know what's going to happen the rest of this game or into tomorrow. Opponents hitting 341 off of Cooper Hammond. He has given up seven extra base hits. Now pinch hitting for Florida State, number 36, Jonathan Foster. And Jonathan Foster. Step up to the plate here as C.J. Van Eyck looks on. Cooling down, got the ice treatment. Jonathan Foster, first at bat as a Seminole, home run to left. And the legend continued. It grew with a walk-off home run against Louisville. Junior out of LaGrange, Georgia, a transfer into the Florida State program. Has those two home runs I just spoke of, a 227 batting average, seven RBI, and a 342 on base percentage. He's got his teammate Durr on at second and Reese Albert at first. Both of which on via walk. And he'll lay down a bunt right back toward the pitcher. And nobody can make the play. Bases are going to be loaded as Hammond and Gill couldn't decide who was going to make that throw over to first. And Escala really wasn't in any kind of position to cover the bag either. A freshman in this environment again. A freshman at first base, fielded the ball. Watch him take a peek. He'll take a peek right when he fields the ball. He, head comes up, did not secure the ball. Going to take full advantage. Base is loaded, nobody out. Back to the top of the order. Infield is in. They cannot give up another run. Fourth error by this Miami staff. And every time, almost every time Miami's committed an error, Florida State has taken full advantage of it. But that actual play may have scored a run in the first. Miami had the bases loaded in the top of the ninth yesterday. This is the first time Florida State has loaded them up all weekend. Bottom yeah. of the eighth. As I mentioned, when the right-handed Hammond came in the ballgame, Florida State, maybe these guys need to see a guy like this. They're save leader for three. He's given up seven extra base hits. The only home run for Salvatore this year was a grand slam against Louisville. And the crowd will continue to get louder as Hammond steps away for a second and now settles back in. One and one the count to Salvatore. Durr at third, Albert at second, Foster at first. And that ball well off the plate. Can you hear what the crowd yelling? Ducks on the pot. I could not hear off. them. <laughs> <laughs> and floaties. There's the floaties. The Scala snags the line drive. Some heads up base running there by Nick Durr, scampering back to the bag at third. The bases remain loaded. You always tell your base runner, especially nobody out in fields in, do not get in a hurry. Make the line drop clear. Good job, as you mentioned, by Durr getting back. You have another freshman. Out, you got a freshman out there at second base. With Albert, Alster at first. This seems to be the kind of moment where a guy like Jackson Luke's eyes would widen a little bit. I think those are about as wide as we've seen them all weekend. And that's a... I'm going to go for the jugular kind of swing out of Jackson Luke. Words out of my mouth. Again, he has the strength to go to left field as well as right field. Oh, 
0-1 the count to Jackson Luke. Seminoles have them loaded. Just yeah. off the plate. One and one. Crowd getting on him and crowd's been getting spoiled by a lot of guys who are very decisive on the mound and not taking a whole lot of time. Hammond more methodical in his approach. And that ball clipped Jackson Luke, so another run will come in for Florida State. It will be 8-1, to one, bottom of the eighth, and only one out on the board. Trying to get up and in, a little movement on it. And again, Luke did not throw the elbow out, nipped him. Animals, young and old, having a blast. So here comes another meeting on the mound between pitcher and catcher. And Didas. A few words for Hammond. He brought that to the plate by Doug Vines. Jim Morris continuing to look on as this one continues to slip further and further away from the Hurricanes. One out on the board, base is loaded. You replace Jonathan Foster at first with Jackson Luke. You got Durr back in the dugout and now Applin at the plate. And Rex Applin picks up a much needed, long awaited base hit with two runs attached. up all night, off-speed stuff, mixing it in. Left-hander loves that ball out over the plate. Side on throw, watch this ball out over the plate, and he just stays inside and drives it to left field. Huge ovation by the crowd. Jim Morris going to the bullpen. Another pitching change for the Hurricanes. Runners still in scoring position as Rhett Applin picks up a two RBI double. 10 runs on the board. And it's 10 to 1. Florida State Cooper Hammond's day is done. And he hardly spent any time on the mound to begin with. Nine pitches. And that is all it took. Michael Mediavia will be the new pitcher for the Hurricanes. Good luck, you've got Cal Raleigh and Drew Mendoza stepping up to the plate. Raleigh a switch hitter. Looking to swing left-handed. Now he's gonna go back to right-handed with the left hand on the mound. So many of you will continue to get warm here. A 6.48 ERA on the season. This will be his 14th appearance. He's got three starts on the year. 25 innings of work. He's given up 30 hits, 18 earned runs. He's walked 13, has struck out 29, 11 extra base hits, and a 294 opponent batting average. Senior out of Hialeah, Florida. Again, 14th appearance, ERA. Nearly at 6.5, 25 innings, 30 hits, 13 walks, and 29 strikeouts. It's been all smiles in the park aside from guys like that gentleman there who are wearing orange and green. tell you 
I was talking to Jim Morris yesterday. He was smiling then. Haven't seen him smiling too, yeah. too much since. Coach Jim Morris, one year, I've been on him a lot of time. Puts the four fingers up, means you're going to the plate, going to four on a ground ball. Puts up the four fingers, and Peel comes in, trying to cut the run off at the plate. Luke at third, Applin at second. Cal Raleigh, the new Seminole at the plate. Fastball above the zone, it's 1-0. Florida State very efficient. Ten runs tonight, nine hits. Take advantage of four hurricane miscues. One and one the count now to Raleigh. would bet right now the nine run lead. Jackson Luke is not going on contact. He's gonna make that ground ball get through the infield. Raleigh tried to hit that ball over the school board. I was gonna say, he was gonna try to land that on the moon right next to where Mendoza's was. <laughs> Good level swing, fastball just above the, above the bat. Raleigh with a couple of doubles today. on top of that ball in the dirt. Go back, it does look like they went and changed the scoring decision and on what was originally ruled a RBI double for Cal Raleigh, they went back and called it an error on the second baseman, Escala. Seminole fans still want Cal Raleigh to shake and bake here. Six runs in the past couple of innings for the Seminoles. But Cal Raleigh throws it at the plate and goes down looking. That'll bring up Drew Mendoza. That pretty much froze Raleigh, that breaking pitch. I think it was a strike. Surprised him there. Sure, you can go out in the ninth inning and have a good conversation with Doug Vines behind the plate. So, with two outs, Drew Mendoza will step up to the plate. He has a couple of hits today, an RBI base hit back in the fifth, and then the no doubter in the previous inning. He played a couple. Three RBI tonight for Mendoza. He's first pitch swinging. Can't hardly blame him. It's 0-1. He doesn't take many strikes. He fouls a lot of balls off. He may swing through them, but he doesn't. He sees a ball, he's going to hit it. He's going to swing at it. Fouls a lot of balls off. The young fans there behind the plate leading from the Seminole Faithful in the Knowles cheer. Count one and one to Drew Mendoza. Check swing. And he came around. Getting a little restless in a nine-run ball game. Amditas back out to the mound. Conversation. Doug Vines doesn't want that out there. Get, get this game going here in a nine-run ball game. Sitting right at about two and a half hours right now. 
still a great crowd on hand. Mendoza continues to battle away. Something we've seen quite a bit. There's been the occasional pitch inside for Miami, but more often than not, they've been working away from a lot of these Seminole hitters. Or State couple of hitters have stayed inside the ball and driven the ball the other way. Here's the 2 2. Down goes Mendoza. So Mediavia comes in and does his job well on 12 pitches, retires Raleigh looking and retires Drew Mendoza swinging. But Florida State plates three more, and Rhett Applin, after being quiet all day, goes oppo and plates a couple more. It is 10 to one Florida State as we head to the top of the ninth inning in Tallahassee. Top of the ninth year in Tallahassee, and if you're just joining us, it has been all Florida State all night long. They lead it 10 to one. It was a slow, I guess you could say it was like that slow drip effect early on. They'd pick up a run here, they'd pick up a run there, they'd pick up a run here, and so on and so forth. These past couple of innings, it's just been a straight up pour for Florida State. The faucet has been fully on, and they've just been pouring runs on top of runs on Miami. Six in the last two innings against the Canes, and Clayton Kwiatkowski will come back on to close this off. Seven and a third innings from the starter, C.J. Van Eyck who until recently had seen the majority of his reps as a reliever. So phenomenal pitching for Florida State continuing into this Saturday game and quickly with Escala is behind the count 0-2. Sean Davison, Chip Baker, Catherine Phillips, our entire ACC Network extra team here on hand above a Pretty packed house here at Dick Hauser Stadium. Fans starting to make their way to the exits and head home and prepare for what should be a big day tomorrow. We'll talk about some of the implications of tomorrow in a second. But, Chip, this has been as impressive a couple of days of pitching as I've seen from Florida State in quite a while. Experience. Again, you got the guys that are doing the job and making the pitches. Off-speed pitches. Well hit ball there by Escala, but Albert has the wheels and tracks it down. One down. Scouts go out and look at, and the coaches go out and look at arm speed, the strength of the speed, how far they throw the fastball, how hard they throw it, movement. But the, the big key in this series, last night's game and tonight, is pitchers being able to locate and make them pitches with that changeup. Tony Jenkins will check in as a pinch hitter here for Miami. And he's first pitch swinging off toward right field and into the glove of Wells, two away. Seminoles on the doorstep as they head here to the eighth hitter in this order, the catcher Amditas. But they are on the doorstep of not only clinching this series against their in-state rival Miami, but also putting Mike Martin into the record books alongside Augie Garrido as the winningest head coach in college baseball. Garrido in there at 1,975 wins. And Mike Martin currently at 1,974. And there you see him looking on. So tomorrow, it would appear Florida State will have their chance at home in front of a crowd for a rivalry series put their head coach into the record books all alone. Photo of my office, myself as a coach with Mike Martin. It was my second or third year here, win number 500. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, you in fact, Decades. you celebrated win Decades number 1,700 yes. yourself up there at Boston College. I've been a part of this program is again, 1,701 wins now. Yeah. 
Yes. And what a great play by Drew Mendoza. Open up the record books. Mike Martin will join Augie Garrido as the winningest coaches in Division I college baseball. It is a 10-1 victory for the 14th ranked Seminoles in game number two. And all that's left for the Seminoles is one more win to put him in there all by himself. A complete performance all the way around. And the Seminoles have clinched the series over Jim Morris and the Miami Hurricanes. Some signs of good sportsmanship as the coaching staff is exchanging handshakes at home plate. And Mike Martin is tied for first for the most wins in NCAA Division I baseball history. Here's Martin waving to President Prasher right there. Tip on the to the crowd. Crackling. His wife Carol down there behind it the, in the net. There's a president. There's Miss Carol. Mary Beth, the daughter, granddaughter. What a special scene here in Tallahassee, and there's a chance that tomorrow it can be even more so as Mike Martin heads back to the dugout. He will head to break in a moment. What a night, Florida State, with a 10-1 victory over Miami. We will be back in just a second. The stars are bright above Dick Hauser Stadium, and the stars on the field have been pretty good today as well. A 10-1 victory for the 14th-ranked Seminoles over the visiting Miami Hurricanes. Third member of our team, Catherine Phillips, is standing by with today's player of the game, Drew Mendoza. Drew Mendoza, a run and three RBI, no doubt on that seventh inning home run. Did you know right away that ball was gone? Uh, I knew I hit it pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I, I knew it for sure. Now, last night was all about the pitching. Of course, the two runs just enough to get the win, but you put up 10 tonight. What sparked this offense? Um, it's just a lot of work in the cages, uh, batting practice every day, meets working with us. Um, just to, get, to find a couple barrels, the whole lineup was feeling it today, and uh, it's looking good going into Sunday. Talk about what the freshman C.J. Van Eyck was able to do on the mound. Uh, we've known what he's capable of, and he really proved it today. That was a, a dominant performance. Um, it was really exciting to be behind him, and it's, uh, it's fun to play behind him. Now your head coach, Mike Martin, has now tied the record for the winningest coach in college baseball. Has there been extra motivation to play for him this weekend? Absolutely. Uh, being a rivalry game also uh, and playing for his record, it's, it's a big weekend for us, and we're excited to be out here tomorrow. Congrats on the win, Drew. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, KP. I think the biggest concern for Drew Mendoza, Chip, was dodging the gum that was being thrown at him. We get a tremendous crowd tonight, tremendous pitching performance. It's going to be a party at Dick Houser tomorrow. For Chip Baker and Captain Phillips, Sean Davidson saying so long from Tallahassee, where Florida State wins it 10 to 1. All games airing on the ESPN networks or streaming live on the ESPN app to watch this entire game on replay, as well as others on our family of networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. We'll make a run at history tomorrow, and we'll see you then.